we're making progress. I just, like I said, decided to not try to put the halter on her face. Not even because she's fighting about it. I just decided I don't want to do it. And so, um, she's allowing me to, uh, put the rope around her front legs and just, you know, just make sure that before I go into touch that she's safe, that I'm safe. And she's, every step of the way, she's just so magnificently honoring of herself and who she is and what she is experiencing. And she's allowing touch, but she's choosing for this process to go really, really slow, actually more for me and what I'm able to understand about how much I am entering into her sacred space. And when you, this is Siri now, She's, she's got me channeling now. And when you come into a horse's sacred space, especially a formerly wild horse, and especially a formerly wild horse who's a mom, it is so vital to pay so much attention to the subtleties that aren't spoken to the feeling, not just of your own accomplishment, but to the feeling of what that being is experiencing. And that is something so often that we focus on the task, but we are not focusing on the absolute subtlety taking place. And the shifts in that being's physiology and neurology. And we are not coming from a space of sacred respect and reverence for all life. As humans, we are so conditioned by what we see. I stand here before this mayor and I see... How exquisite she is. I see her essence. I see her physical body. And it is beautiful. And it is powerful. She is small but mighty. And. Standing in this proximity with her. Not trying to fight. Not trying to demand but asking. I get to see her essence in a different way. She's allowing herself to be vulnerable and to trust me in her sacred space. So often as humans, we take the perspective that we have a right. Maybe it's a right of ownership. Maybe it's a right of guardianship. I don't know. But we feel like we have this right to their bodies. And I don't think that that's right anymore. I don't think that that's the place I ever want to come to a horse again with. I don't have a right to her body. She has a right to her body. I have a right to ask if she will allow me to work with her, but I do not have a right to her body, and I do not have a right to ever reprimand her for what I am asking if I can get into her body about. I'm in the car now because it's raining. So, um, what really is so striking to me about this 
process of going really slow and understanding everything from serious perspective is that there are so many things that I could overlook about how she's feeling. There are so many things that I could just override about getting into her body, getting into her space the way that I want to that doesn't necessarily work for her. And I, all of a sudden, this is kind of triggering for me thoughts and reflections back on childhood, trauma and abuse and boundaries, right? When I was really young and I could not defend myself wasn't even actually conscious of what was going on, my father was able to cross boundaries with me that were not okay. And he was not tuned in to the sensitivity. He, he was not tuned in to the sacredness. And here I am with this horse, this beautiful mare, who, if left in the wild, she would be completely fine with her kids and she would know exactly how to raise them. And she would raise them really, really well, as she is now. But what really comes up for me is this level of subtleness of energy that even the blink of my eyelash, how my breath is moving through my system, where my intentions are that could get distracted from being fully present for her. It blows me away how subtly sensitive these animals are. And yet, even under gentle hands, we're not harming them, but we're also not listening to them at their deepest level. Because often we don't have that connection to or remembrance of our sacred subtleness in terms of sharing the sacred space together. And it makes me so conscious and so aware and so alert of anything I do with my horses. Not to the point of like, this is not ridiculous. Like, yes, I get it. horses can double barrel kick each other and they're very tough and they're very strong and they know how to handle each other and it themselves in herd. But in this sacred space where separation has occurred between human and horse because human has been indoctrinated into a mindset that has bankrupted it basically from remembering the softness and the gentleness and the the subtlety that takes place in this unified energy field is really a major wake up call to me and to such an exquisite training from her that I am so deeply grateful for. Because when you're around animals, ooh, I hear thunder. And you start to remember this subtlety because you're not having to go up into your mind. You can actually be really, really present in your body and you can be really connected to the unified field and you enter into this space with them where again you're connecting more dots than you're separating. It is such a precious gift that I am sharing with her or that she's sharing with me on this day.